and then lights play out. Sibelius, I, I used, uh, for example, uh, Jean Sibelius's Finlandia. If you listen to that, it's a very overblown kind of thing. So this is Tommy in his absolute glory. And then the next thing, he's back in the prison cell and, and he's he's crying and he's raging and he's screaming Danny Wagner's name again. And Danny comes to torment him uh, somehow. And there's another voice. And, and so we, we don't know. We don't know really. It, it, it probably is. I was going in a sense with American Psycho thing, Brett Easton Ellis, that very overrated and, and not too good book. Uh, the thing, though, a lot of people don't get about that is if you actually read the book and you see the film, uh, the guy never kills anyone. It's all in his mind. So I, I thought this might be a, an interesting thing to leave it open. Uh, is is Tommy's so-called crimes, is this just him self-aggrandizing himself again because he's stuck in this wheelchair or his 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 job you know he's 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 got this high paying job apparently uh that's a government giveaway you know and and yet he goes you know he he goes ape shit over it and so we end up with uh you know Tommy looks about uh, at the audience then we get the Keats poem again and then he's looking at his hand again and there are three consecutive loud sounds because there 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 there's been uh, glass uh, on stage the the mirrors and they they all sort of shatter and so uh, it, it, it's, it, it's deliberately making fun of sort of this melodramatic 1960s kind of thing. Uh, you know, this could very, Tommy in a sense is sort of a young white male version of Joan Crawford. If you've ever seen any old Joan Crawford films, she always plays these psycho kind of characters from the 1960s in these B movies. And Tommy would seem very comfortable, uh, in such a movie. <laughs> in a Joan Crawford movie? Yeah. <laughs> The uh, use of public domain stuff, you end up using Nietzsche, but it initially starts off with an Ayn Rand quote from Atlas Shrugged uh, that that you, that uh, Danny sort of goes ballistic over that this is being used because it's not public yeah. domain. Yeah. Uh, and the quote is literally on top of Tommy. It's weighing him down. Yeah. Uh, just as, as the Nietzsche one. But that one's less heavy. That one's less hewn in Grand Night. Yeah, and I even say how, how they can, if, if they can't get, if they produce this play and they can't get the rights, we can just remove that. So in the play, we get a justification for using something that's public domain, but we can scrap it if, 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 if we can. And so it, 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 it adds this kind There's of... There's also people that this Danny answers to, because the stage manager comes out and has received calls and complaints, and they're not happy, the legal department of the theater. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and, 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 and that's something that, that can be played around with uh, by actual uh, theatrical stuff. And, you know, we get, we, the, the, there's certainly a fantastical element, you know. There's the, the, the blonde, you know, stereotypical newscaster. And she, I, I think she walks around in a, in a negligee or a bikini or something. Uh, and she, she's trying to tempt Danny or she's trying to tempt Tommy. Or Tommy's like, you know, his tongue is hanging out. Uh, because he can't get women because he's this short, shriveled, handicapped, psychotic. Well, she cobbles him, too. And she lets him feel her feet and, and touch it and kiss it. Yeah. And then when he goes too far with it, then she goes ballistic. And I think there's a later scene of him killing her or attempting to kill her yeah. while all the lights are flashing and turning color. Yeah. Which, uh, when you were referring to whiteouts, I was thinking of how you changed it even more with this play in the dramatic lighting. Yeah. There's also a, a really uh, terrific scene, too, where uh, Tommy is literally arguing with himself, left and right. Yeah. There's the left Tommy and the right Tommy. And then, and, and then is Tommy also a closet case because there's this muscular guy and, and who's sort of teasing Tommy, too. But the thing about the kissing the foot... That I took from... Uh, My gay guard didn't go off there. Yeah, he no. Se he, se he seems to be repulsed by it. Yeah, but but the, the, the character is assuming the gay guy, the muscular guy, but, but the kissing the foot thing is a rework, and I actually take some of the actual quotes from uh, the English translation of uh, uh, Miss Julie. Uh, and, I, and this is something that I mentioned. There's probably about five, six, seven plays of mine that I take maybe a five or six uh, exchange run from a famous play and repurpose it in plays. And I don't, I don't tell anyone about it. This is something for people to do, but the kissing the foot scene is a direct steal and a direct quote from uh, Miss Julie by, uh, 
by Strindberg. And it and if you know that scene, the way it plays out here gives it a whole different dimension. Uh, also, use Melville too, where he's uh, he's 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 against the whale of himself or something. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of. I mean, this is a this is a play too that initially I wanted to start out. Uh, I found I found myself in the the last oh, from about play twenty two to about play twenty seven five or six plays, my mind getting a little bit too absurdist um, because some of these characters initially I was going to want to have the Tommy character. Well, as I was going through it now, uh, I still don't emotionally resonate with this. I still don't emotionally like this play, but. It is a lot more complex than what I was initially thinking because it does seem to switch between different styles within every scene. It has it has more complexity than initially seen on the first glance. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's one of the things I did. But I found myself. I I think maybe I was trying to give myself pressure to get say twenty seven or at least a play a week for six months, uh, and. It's not that, that I regret doing the play this way, but if I had taken more time, what I'd was make... That? What? What was that? I didn't hear anything. There was, a loud, there was a loud screech. I didn't hear anything. Okay. Um, but, uh, uh, and, and, and another thing, too, uh, that we didn't mention, there's also the sadistic old grandfather, Poppy, who uh, apparently molests, oh, yes. who molests the, the, the girl and... Uh, uh, who beats uh, Tommy mercilessly, and so, but but again, that's not really explored that much because uh, again, these are expected things, and so I, I sort of use these built-in stereotypes. We don't really need to know much about Poppy. Uh, we can figure out Tommy is sort of what he is in a large degree because of Poppy, but 